Dobrý den, moje jméno je Alžběta Houzarová a jsem mluvčí českého YouTube. V uplynulých měsících asi většina z nás musela poměrně drasticky změnit životní styl. To se samozřejmě promítlo i do toho, na jaká videa se chodíme dívat na YouTube. A YouTube v posledních letech vlastně se stal takovým zrcadlem globální kultury. A je to právě kulturní obsah, za kterým na YouTube míří obrovské množství diváků v poslední době. Celosvětově jsme zaznamenali až 40 milionů zhlédnutí například virtuálních vystoupení pěveckých sborů. A jakýmsi vrcholem loňské jarní sezóny, alespoň na YouTube, se stalo vystoupení italského zpěváka Andreji Bocelliho ve zcela prázdné katedrále narození Pany Marie. V jednu chvíli tento přímý přenos sledovalo po celém světě až 2,5 milionů diváků, což ho vlastně povýšilo na doposud nejsledovanější přímý přenos klasické hudby. Není tedy pochyb o tom, že inovace a technologie určitým způsobem mohou pomoci naplnit v těchto těžkých dobách některé naše potřeby, například e, účastnit se kulturních akcí nebo vnímat umění. A proto je nám nesmírnou ctí, že můžeme na YouTube dnes uvést exkluzivně balet spící krasavice s hudbou Petra Iliče Čajkovského v nastudování baletu Národního divadla a v choreografii legendární prima baleríny Marcí Hajdé. Jsme poctěni, že se soubor baletu Národního divadla rozhodl tento výjimečný kulturní zážitek zprostředkovat všem divákům YouTube po celém světě. Pojďte si s námi tento pohádkový balet užít i vy. Uh, hello, I'm... Filip Barankiewicz, the artistic director of the Czech National Ballet in Prague. And we have wonderful guests here with us. And on behalf of the Czech National Ballet, we are welcoming Marcia Haidé. We are in the preparation time of the Sleeping Beauty. And it's, we feel more than honored to have Marcia with us here. Thank you, Filip. But I feel honored that you invited me to be here. Thank you. Mr. Barankiewicz, why did you choose the Sleeping Beauty Ballet for Prague? First of all, this production was supposed to take place in uh, May 2020, and now we are in February 2021. So it was supposed to be the first opening premiere of the state opera, the Deutsche Theater, after the reconstruction. Uh, so. It was, the, it was supposed to be the first premiere that we, the Czech National Ballet, would perform in newly reconstructed theater. And my choice of Sleeping Beauty from Marcia Haidé is because not only that I grew up on, on that production, but I think the dramaturgy of that performance is just wonderful. The way uh, Marcia introduced Karabos figure, it's very, very special. Mrs. Haidé, The Sleeping Beauty was your first choreography. Why did you choose this piece in particular? Well, Sleeping Beauty was one of the most important uh, uh, ballets in my life. For the simple reason that I was three years old when my mother took me to the theater in Rio de Janeiro, Teatro Municipal, and I saw a production with uh, the ballet Russe, they had three ballets. The first two ballets, I really can't remember what it was, but the third one was Aurora's Wedding, the third act of Sleeping Beauty. And from that moment on, when I saw that ballet, when I saw the ballerina that came on stage with white satin costume with little dark blue stars, and black, black hair and that white skin, I said, that's what I want to be. And I was three years old. So beauty is the one that uh, pushed me can, into this career of ballet. Your version is different from most other adaptations of The Sleeping Beauty. In what way? <laughs> well, the thing is that because Sleeping Beauty, that was the beginning of my life with Sleeping Beauty when I was three years old. 
But then many things always happened in my life that was connected with Sleeping Beauty. So when I became, after Kranko's death, that I became a director in the Stuttgart Ballet, came a moment that I said, I want to have the Sleeping Beauty in this company. I had the Swan Lake from Kranko, but Kranko never wanted to do the Sleeping Beauty. So I was looking for a choreographer to do a different version of beauty. I wanted a different version because there were certain things that I felt that um, uh, needed more, more strength in that character, like Carabos. Carabos in most versions was like a, an old figure. But uh, for me, Carabos was a very, very important part of that, uh, that constellation of Aurora, Prince, Lilac Fairy. And I wanted to do um, special choreography for the one that was my partner, Richard Cragen. He was a fantastic dancer, fantastic uh, partner. We were together 16 years, and then we separated, but we continued dancing 32 years that we danced together. And one day, then Richard said, Marcia, you keep looking for a choreographer to do Sleeping Beauty, but you know what you want to do, so why don't you do it? And I said, oh, I don't know. He says, Marcia, we're all here to help you. And that's why when I went into, into Sleeping Beauty, and somehow I had the luck that was a big success. And Ricky was really an amazing, amazing Carabos. Mr. Brankiewicz, did you dance Carabos in The Sleeping Beauty? He danced everything in Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Is this a difficult part? It's a fantastic role to do. I mean, in production of Marcia Hardé, I dance, as Marcia mentioned, Everything. From Corps de Ballet to Four Princes to Bluebird to Alibaba to Prince Desire and Carabos. So I have to say that it was my, one of my favorite roles. But because it, 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 you really can enjoy. And it's not only about the technique and about being on stage and play the evil. It's, it's the most important role of that performance. Yes. And for me, because the most important thing in ballet is the, the story. If it's Sleeping Beauty, or Swan Lake, or Romeo and Juliet, or uh, Onegin, the story. The story is the most, uh, the most important thing. So in Sleeping Beauty, it, and it has to go with my beliefs. I believe that the world exists with bad and good. Bad is never going to disappear, and good is never going to disappear. So then why, in most versions, Carabos disappears. They kill Carabos, so Carabos disappears. Suddenly it's not there anymore. And I said, no, Carabos continues. And that's why at the end of my beauty, Carabos goes by and just looks at the public, and she could say something, Carabos would say, wait for me, I'm coming back. No, because it's, it's part of our life, of our world, is good and bad. Mrs. Haide, you had the opportunity to dance with great artists, Rudolf Nureyev, Vladimir Malakov, Richard Cragen, Mikhail Berishnikov, Jorge Don. Which one of them made the strongest impression on you? Well, the first partner and the great one in my life that uh, I owe him, like I owe Kranko, to be what I am today is Richard Craig. There is no comparison to anybody else. Now, Nureyev, I loved Nureyev. I had uh, uh, such um, admiration for, the, for him as an artist, as a dancer. And when he invited me to dance with him, I didn't think once, I said yes, and I go. 
And many years I danced with Nureyev and was a very, very great uh, learning process for me because he was with me, he was very generous. So my technique was never the perfect classical technique, but he made me understand what was the classical technique. He worked with me, he did never uh, spend one moment that he would let something go by without saying, that's not good. So he was very special in my life too. Then came Georges Don. Georges Don, that was the first dancer for Maurice Bejar. When I suddenly started working in the company with Bejar and danced with Georges Don, that was uh, again another great experience because Georges Don was a god. When he was on stage with that blonde hair, those long arms, that beautiful face, I mean, there was no way that you could not uh, go with him. Or... So he was another experience that I had that was so special. Those two, by uh, uh, Nureyev and Georges Don, were the other special cases in my life. But the first one was Richard Green. If you could turn back time and portray one single role again in one specific performance, what would it be? Difficult to say, because every role that I danced or was created for me is a part of me. So if I could go back in time, I would do exactly everything like I did till today. And that's a long life. I'm now with 83. <laughs> And I started with three. There was nothing in my life that I would change. With all the mistakes that I made, with everything that happened, I would do exactly the same thing. And that's all the roles that were created for me, because that made me in what I am. Dear Marcia, <laughs> this is Yuri Kilian speaking. And I know that you are in Prague now and that you have an interview. And I cannot tell you how much I would love to be with you right now. But can I pose you a question? <laughs> we have met in 1968. That means we know each other for 53 years. And in 1970, that is 51 years ago, I had the privilege to work with you and Richard Cragen creating my first choreography called Kommen und Gehen, Come and Go. And uh, I must say you were the bravest dancers ever because I asked you some outrageous things to do. So could you give us a little explanation how it was and how you felt working with a young, starting and totally inexperienced choreographer? Thank you, take care, good luck, bye-bye. First of all, my dear, dear Yuri Kilian, I always called you the Lord of the Choreographers. I called him the Lord of Choreographers because he had such an elegance that he never for one second, while he was choreographing, he lost that elegance that he had. So for me, he's a lord of choreography. You can feel this in his ballets. Yes, mm -hmm. and also his choreography is the way they go into from one step to the other. It's fascinating. For me, he's a genius, a genius. And yes, that was one of the most uh, exciting <laughs> experience that I had. Because of course, to have you that I knew already, because one knew that you were going to be one of the great choreographers in the world. Well, you were going to be a genius. So when you asked me, Enrique, to do something with you, I immediately I said yes. And I remember very well that we were in that ballet room, that there was in one side, there was a piano, and you were sitting and with Enrique, you said to Ricky, in the gentle way that you always had, 
elegant way. And you said, Ricky, how do you think if it's possible that you go forward and you pick up Marcia, put her in her back, in your back, and push the, the legs so that she does like lying down on his back, a pirouette. <laughs> and then from there, we would see how to come out. And I said, <laughs> well, no problem, let's go. And I put myself there, and Ricky put me in the back, and he did, it didn't work. And nearly delicate again said, I think he needs a little bit more force. <laughs> so Ricky followed exactly what Yiri said. And he gave me so much force <laughs> that I was on the back of Ricky, like this table, and I did one pirouette, two pirouettes, and couldn't stop. And from then on, Ricky was going to try to catch me. And I flew <laughs> on the floor underneath the piano. And I finished flat like a pancake under the piano. And Yiri said, oh, that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted. <laughs> so that's my experience with my loving Yiri Killian. You should call it pancake choreography. <laughs> pancake choreography. You worked with such celebrated choreographers as John Cranko, Kenneth Macmillan, Maurice Bejar, John Newmayer. Did they have anything in common? And in what ways were they different? What? The four great choreographers with me was Bejar, Cranko, Bejar, Macmillan, John Neumayer. And they, have, they had one thing in common that they all wanted to create for me. And that was my luck in life. And all the other choreographers, even also the younger choreographers, so choreographers still from today, they want to work with me. So that's one thing that they all had in common, is that they wanted to work with me. And that was what made my career. That's why I danced for so long because they created for the age that I had. I never had to, uh, when I was 60, to dance something that was created for me when I was 19. And that I have to thank those choreographers, those crazy choreographers that absolutely loved me and wanted to work with me. You were the muse of John Cranko. What was the most important thing he gave you? Everything. He was my mentor. Um, I, there was something very uh, special that I could feel what Krenko wanted from me. Even before he said a step, I had this connection with him that uh, made this work with this, that, that man so so great, and that we worked 12 years, and then he died at the age of 46. That was uh, the end of the world for me. There I wanted to stop dancing and stop. I didn't want to continue because he was my life, mm. you know, my life. And, uh, but came the moment that uh, I felt that my love for dance was even stronger than my love uh, for Cranko. So I had to continue working. You worked as the artistic director of the Stuttgarter Ballet. Yeah. What is the most memorable thing or story that springs to mind when you think of that time and place? <laughs> I think that was the moment when Cranko died, and I went looking for another choreographer to take over the company. And um, I brought Glenn Tetley. But Glenn Tetley, after two years, he said, Marcia, this is not for me, because the company and the public and the city and the government, they all still attached to Cranko. So then the company said, 
Marcia, we want you to become the director because, of course, they connected me with Cranko. And I said to the company, I said, listen, I, I want to dance. I don't want to direct. I want to dance. I was born to be a dancer, not a director. And they said, okay, but then you continue dancing and be in directors. And I thought, well, let's try. And I tried and I stayed till, I don't know how many years, 20 more years, I, st I stayed directing the company and dancing. And we had, was a very special relationship with the dancers. Because as I was doing class with them every day, I was rehearsing. The choreographers that came, they wanted to work with me, but I was also able to bring choreographers to work with the other principal dancers, because otherwise you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be right. I wouldn't be able to continue directing a company in which they only wanted to create for me and not for the rest of the company. So we found um, a way. We found a way that, um, very special way to direct. That's why I say I'm not ever a director. I was a dancer di directing other dancers. Dear Marcia, I'm so pleased hearing from you and I wish you all the best for your new production of Sleeping Beauty. My question to you is, is Vladimir speaking, my former theater is the opera house you are now working in and I would like to know how you feel on this stage where I started my first steps of my ballet career and I'm so much looking forward also to see your production of Sleeping Beauty in Prague in my hometown. Wish you all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. My dear Vladi, I recognized you immediately. I, I think of you so much while I'm here in this theater because I know that this is your house. And um, I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to dance on Yegen in this place. And it's very strange because uh, exactly what uh, I was telling Philip now, I feel so good in this theater. And sometimes when the rehearsals are over and I have a pause, I never leave the, the theater. I'm always sitting there alone in the audience and uh, I feel at home here. It's a connection that I have with this, with the city and with this theater, and of course with Philip and no, and of course that this city is your city, Yiri city, Yiri Kilian, Ivan Lishka, all those dances that were part of my my life. So I send you a big kiss, and to my dear, dear, dear Birgit Kyle. Without her, it wouldn't have been possible, the life in Stuttgart. The two of us were like one, the way we work together. Big kiss to Birgit. You have traveled all over the world and visited many companies. How do you view the Czech National Ballet? Fantastic. This company is, it's really was a big surprise to me because they have such a discipline. They have such a wish to dance, to get better. They understand, they are, um, they are always ready uh, to, to do whatever one asks. So the experience that I have now to prepare the Sleeping Beauty with this beautiful company, with all their dances, it's, it's a present. It's a present for me. After many years, at the beginning of this year, you stopped working as artistic director in Santiago de Chile. That's a big change. Yes. How do you feel about it and what are your plans for the future? You know, <laughs> first, it's a, it's a big change because it's the first time that... Uh, Otherwise, up to that day, end of, uh, end of December 20, I was always in directing uh, 
uh, the company or dancers or always doing things, no? And now I just don't have that. But I have other things. I have the possibility for this to, to work like I'm working with, uh, with Philip here, that I spend my day here. And I always say to myself when I wake up every morning, and I really believe in what I say, the best is still to come. So I'm waiting to see what life brings me. But I know that the best is still to come. Mr. Brankiewicz, what does Mercia mean to you? And in what ways does she inspire you? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. I feel that I started dancing in Stuttgart um, a bit too late. I would wish to be working with Marcia more. Even though I have to say that I had this privilege to work with Marcia many, many times because Marcia was always visiting and coming to Stuttgart and working with the Sleeping Beauty. And I shared stage many times with you in Romeo, in uh, La Sulfide. You were my witch. Witch. And with Mauro B. Gonzetti production. So yeah. I, it was not only meeting Marcia by um, legend Marcia as a choreographer and wonderful muse of, of uh, John Cranko and dancer, but also a dancer because you would perform with us, with the company. So it's kind of a combination of... And the truth is that the first time I saw Marcia was in Warsaw and I was a little kid and I watched Marcia with John Neumeyer doing the chairs. This, this was the first time I met or I saw Marcia performing as a dancer. And this was the reason why I actually decided to have a professional dancing career. So it's more than men mentor, I would say. It was mm. also like an inspiration, truly, as, truly inspiration. Well, I invite all of you, please, to come and see this beautiful, beautiful company in this beautiful, beautiful theater and my version of Sleeping Beauty. Really, I'll, I hope that all of you come because it's very important to see the dances that you all have. You should know how good they are. We are very lucky. First of all, we are very lucky to have this production. Then we are very lucky to be able to work with Marcia because Marcia is true inspiration for our dancers. And we are also very, very, and this we have to express the thank towards our Ministry of Culture and all the hygienic uh, station to be, that they are giving us the opportunity to not leave the theater in sense of working, that we are allowed to be here and we manage to progress every single day because this is so important for our dancers. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of our dancers, I have to express that we cannot wait on the and until the theaters finally will open and we can see our wonderful audience buy back in the house and watch this wonderful production. So please come as soon as possible. Thank you. <laughs>